everyone has a childhood impression card. And yes, I made that word up, but no, it is not a dream card. It is a card that you saw when you were little and it forever engraved a special impression in your mind. And it is the card out of thousands that got your attention. For me, this card is right next to me now. And this is the Lamborghini Gallardo. The year was 2006, and that year, two big things happened. First one being the World Cup, and the second one was definitely seeing the Gallardo for the first time. I saw this car off a magazine, which I have already lost memory about, but this car was also the first time I learned the name Lamborghini. And to me, this is what a supercar is supposed to look like. It is supposed to look exactly like this, and this car was sort of the benchmark in my mind for supercar designs, even today. See, it's wide, it's just really low, it's really aggressive. It really has that Lamborghini stance, the forward sprinting stance, and the angry charging bull stance. The front face of the Gallardo is simply impressive. And what we have here is the LP560-4, which is after the facelift. And I think the facelifted version looks better because Overall, it just looks more angry and more modern. It's still got the aggressiveness and those headlights specifically are integrated into the bonnet. So the car looks extra sleek and smooth. And when the car uh, is turned on, when the lights are turned on, those lights had this Y-shaped LED light sort of resembles that essence of the newer Huracan, which is quite interesting. On the side of the Gallardo, you see you have this really nice line. It goes flat and smooth and it finishes back here with a sharp angle. This is just brilliant. And you know, on the newer Lamborghinis, you got the really high profile scissor doors, really cool, really, you know, standing out from the crowd. But on the Gallardo, it's different. You've got a door handle right here and you simply pull it and it opens up like a regular door. Before we take a look at the interior, you see on regular cars, there's a little latch right there. You pull that and it's supposed to open the uh, engine hood. Well, you pull it right here, but the noise comes from the front of it. And then you trace the noise and come to the front. You see that the hood is already open and simply open it up and reveals a rather deep trunk space. Now, this is actually a really small trunk. The width of it is only about the size of my hand, but it's quite deep and certainly can fit a little bit of your stuff, for example, a backpack or a little bit of a grocery. Now you may be saying, we have the front trunk with that latch, then what about the hood in the back there? Well, for first timer, it's actually quite difficult to find. You have to uh, adjust the seat forward because that it's hidden behind the seat and it is this little latch right here. You reach your hand in it and pull the latch and with that noise, you know the hood is open. Coming to the back here, now I think the most important and interesting piece of the design is the honeycomb grille. I think the shape is just quite unique and only Lamborghini will ever think of it. Uh, for the tail lights, you have those fishbone shaped LED strips and that's also visible on your Aventador. Down here, four exhaust pipes for that V10 in it. So now let's take a look at the engine by simply lifting the entire hood. But before we dig into the engine, I want to talk about the model name of this car. So this is the Gallardo LP560-4. Gallardo, as you may already know if you know Spanish, is a breed of the Spanish fighting bull. And LP stands for in Italian, Longitudinale Posteriore. And that is for the mid-engine built longitudinally in front of the rear axle. 560 is the amount of horsepower it has, and 4 means four-wheel drive. Underneath the engine hood, we have a 5.2-liter V10 that outputs 552 horsepower and 398 pound-feet of torque. This engine is paired with a six-speed single-clutch automatic transmission and with the all-wheel drive system, sending the golden bolt from 0 to 60 in just 3.6 seconds with a top speed of 202 miles per hour. And this is how it sounds. Now, getting inside, 
the Lamborghini Gallardo. Wow. This is not the most luxurious nor the sportiest cabin or cockpit I've ever been in, but it is certainly one of the most special. I mean, th after all, this is my childhood supercar. You got that Lamborghini logo right in front of you on the steering wheel and the beautiful Lamborghini, the, the, the label right on there. Like you can see it and just sitting in here. It's such a interesting experience because you got everything that's really sloped down and you feel like you're in a very intense cabin sitting inside you can tell that this car uses a generous amount of leather throughout the cabin like you got the really thick leather on the headliner the seats of course are made of thick leather and leather steering wheel leather center console on both sides and even the dashes are made of really nice and thick leather even though you know you are never going to touch the front of the dash that part is also made of thick leather and it's nicely stitched. And since this is such a tight cabin, the steering wheel, you see the bottom of it is flatted out so it leaves more room for your knees and legs. And the steering wheel, I absolutely love this steering wheel. There's nothing on there, no buttons nor switches. And that is what you want in a supercar like this because that will not drive you away from you know concentrating on the driving. Moving on to the center console. Now, this part's got multiple sections and the first one on top of it has three dials. The first one on the left shows you the oil pressure and the one in the middle shows you the oil temperature and one on the very right shows you how much battery voltage you have. All of them, of course, are important uh, things you have to monitor in this car. And below that, you see some nice stitching and then it's a screen and that is actually the navigation screen as well as MP3 radios and all that. But that thing is really from the last era. As you can tell, this is really old. It's not touch sensitive and all the buttons and switches as well as the font and the way it's being displayed, everything just seems really, really old school from the color and the text. That is something that nobody really wants to use in this car. Further down, we have perhaps the most interesting and special part of the interior design, which are those switches. Now, you know, on the newer Lamborghinis, the Huracans and the Aventadors, they have cockpits pretty much resembles that of a fighter jet. And in this car, it's not really the case, but that part specifically is the case. It's really shiny with the chrome finish, and that just looks really outstanding from the rest of the interior because that is way brighter. And lastly, we have the AC control unit, which is just, you know, it's a little different, but it doesn't take too long for you to get used to it. So I'm not going to detail into that, but I'm going to detail in the things happening afterwards in the center console right here. Now I'm going to show you something just really exclusive to this car. You see, normally in a regular car, we have the gear lever here, or maybe the gear switch buttons here in the middle you know, for the newer cars. But in this cars, uh-uh, that's not the case. In the middle, you've got three buttons. The first one says Sport, the one in the middle says A, and the one on the right says Corsa. So those are actually the most selectors on this car. The one on the left says Sport, and that is definitely, you know, Sport mode. The one in the middle says A, and A is Auto, because remember, this car has a six-speed, single-clutch, automatic manual transmission. And if, when you put into A, this car will shift itself. The last button on the right says Corsa, and you may not know what that means, but that's okay. In Italian, it says Corsa, and that in English means race, and that is going to put this car in the most angry and aggressive mode. And then you may be thinking, where? how do I shift this car? Well, this car has the so-called E-gear transmission, and it is controlled by the two pedals here. I mean, they do have mm, really satisfying click to them, really nice feel to your hand. And the interesting thing is, you may be also thinking, how do I put this car into reverse? Well, you don't see it here, you don't see it here, you don't see it everywhere. It is a button on the very left next to the uh, gauge cluster labeled R. So in case you don't know what that means, now you do. You press the buttons and the car is in reverse. Coming back to the E-Gear, as I said, they are pretty much pedal shifters. However, just look at them. And that's my finger, and that's how much pedal you get. And uh, they are fixed on the steering column, so when you turn and stuff, you have to reach them. 
unlike some newer and the newer sports cars and supercars, they have big, nice and thick pedals like the ones in the newer Lamborghinis, Ferraris, and even Alfa Romeo, Giulia. Those ones are tiny. And that's really, really interesting because it shows that this car was born in a time when things weren't really developed to a really mature stage. Like people were just starting to use those pedals and inventing these pedals of on the same era the F430 has bigger pedals but still not that big. In in this car, those are absolutely small and tiny. And I can imagine when you take corners and stuff, if your hands here, you no longer can reach it easily. You have to pull off your hand, get it, shift it, and pull back to the steering wheel. And last but not least, here's the key to this Lamborghini Gallardo. And it seemingly is just a regular key except for the little logo right here that shows its status. And uh, un again, unlike the newer cars with the fighter jet interior, you know, you flip the little cover and you press button to start a car. This is just old school, which has a different layer of, you know, feel to it. And this is the moment I've been waiting for quite a while. Let's go on for a drive. All right, we're in neutral, so one click to the first gear. Wow, can't believe <laughs> I'm driving my childhood dream now. Childhood supercar. Wow, <laughs> it's just really special. We're pulling at 3000 RPM. Oh, wow. This car just packs so freaking much, so much power sitting position it's really low like i'm pretty much cramped into this buckles bucket seat but that really gives you that freaking supercar sports seat, sports car feeling you know up shift see in this car you can really tell the age on the single clutch transmission um up shift is really not like nowadays you know the double clutch dual clutch all of that instantly fast the new ZF automatic is fast too but on this car with the e-gear it's quick but there is still that pull you know that little bit of gap um, especially reminds you that this is sort of like a race car you know you really have that moment that you just kind of push into your seat but then that really gives you a sporty feeling Downshift is uh, wow. This car is fast. <laughs> Even by by back then, this car is fast, and now this car is still really fast. And that's just amazing. Supercars like these, you know, that V10 right behind you. <laughs> sounds so super good and that's something that supercars do like they really bring you that sensation that you are driving something truly truly special not only the performance of this car is just top notch it also makes you feel great and so great that your blood boils and <laughs> you're just having a great day in these cars wow and this car, it's so easy to drive fast. Nothing, there's no doubt about that. No doubt about that. And when you go through bumps like that, yes, it's really stiff and bumpy, but then it corrects and it just get back to the state it was very quickly. Give it a push. Whoa. Wow, now that, that is fast. 0, 16, 3 point something, I can't remember, but this car just pulls so much power, even for that short of distance. Now, let's get into Corsa mode. We're in Corsa right now. Corsa means racing, and so let's see what this car has to do. Wow, in Corsa, this is really true. Lamborghini said that this car once in Corsa mode, you know, the transmission time is significantly reduced. 
and let's give it a little nice push. What? Oh sh! What? So that was Corsa. <laughs> that was Lamborghini at its finest state. This thing is definitely not designed for everyday driving because you can see in that short amount of time it already makes me all excited and pumped because it's got so much power and yes Lamborghini was right in Corsa the shifting time was reduced significantly oh, but I gotta admit the steering wheel was really heavy haven't been driven one of these for a while and that is special even kids were looking at you like you can see them they're just <laughs> staring right at you um, I can see why people who drive these cars will want to be low-key because you sort of become the ultimate jerk if you don't behave in this car and uh, I'm just gonna go Wow, that was a blast and now you are just coming into a place like this took that corner with full confidence really <laughs> occasionally this car will be scary to drive but you know if you know that this beast is to, to be tamed and you are ready to tame this beast then you tell it just like how a Spanish bullfighter will be doing and what you'll be doing this car is use your mind and that is going to help you tame the beast one more push. What the f That. Wow. It just turns all the road and streets in into a racing, you know, maniac playground. This car. Wow. It's just so special i can't believe this is actually one of my favorite cars right now i mean yes it's not like i said it's not refined it's not really luxurious and all that but it just feels special like on a sunny day you take a sunday afternoon you find a place like these and you just give it a nice fun time push it downshift push it and drive with full spirit and this is what a Lamborghini Gallardo was born to do, was born to give you. The Lamborghini Gallardo is my childhood supercar, and I believe it is the same for many people. I mean, this car it is still that golden standard of supercar design in my mind. And 14,000 of these were sold throughout its production time, making this car the most popular Lamborghini ever made. No wonder why it was featured in so many places. Now, with one of these trading at around $100,000 to $120,000-ish range, I can totally see this car being some people's first supercar. I mean, it looks great and it's crazy. It still has that Lamborghini craziness to it with that Vita in the back and offers a really unique, one-of-a-kind driving experience that really teases you to drive, drive, and drive. And at the end of the day, if you are ready for a super stiff suspension for the really intense cabin, I think the Lamborghini Gallardo will make you giggle. This is what we drive, and I will see you soon in the next video.